In 2021, physics has never been more important in addressing the big global challenges we all face today. Now, APS members from academia, national laboratories and industry are gathering virtually for the 2021 APS March meeting to communicate and explore these challenges together. And we're here to cover it all. This is APS TV. Hello and welcome to APS TV, brought to you for the very first time from the 2021 virtual APS March meeting. Now, we'll be featuring some of the very best research in physics today from across the globe and all the news and views from the meeting itself. Numbers of our members are college professors. And so suddenly they had to learn how to teach online. So now we have it all recorded so you can just go and pick the session that you want to. We've got some great events lined up. We're doing a March Job Expo. Hi, so the theme for this year, it's around equity, diversity, and inclusion. And what we do is we try to bring all the great computational methods, especially AI and ML methods, to all kinds of natural science problems. I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by the new APS uh, president, uh, who needs no introduction from me. It's uh, Jim Gates. Jim, welcome to our program. Well, thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. Now, what a year you've uh, picked to take over as uh, APS uh, president. You know, we've still got a pandemic. We're coming on the back of an election. You've got a new administration. What impact does all that have on the physics community? Large numbers of our members are college professors. And so suddenly they had to learn how to teach online. And that, of course, was, is a challenge, uh, especially as a number of us are, shall we say, not spring chickens. Uh, but a number of our colleagues had an entirely different problem. In a COVID pandemic environment, you can't even get into the laboratory safely. And so for a lot of our colleagues, there was just an inability to actually do physics which, of course, is a great challenge. I mean, hopefully, you know, we're on our way uh, out of this uh, pandemic now. So how would you like things to actually go from here? One of the political overhangs are the actions that the previous administration took to, as they claim, make America first. Now, unfortunately, the consequence of that policy was to cut Americans off from the rest of the world, and that includes physics. So we have to rebuild those bridges, both for our colleagues as well as the extraordinary number of international students who come to the U.S. who get an education, but also who benefit our country. Now, you're well known uh, in the physics community as a, as a leading communicator. Now, how important is it for physicists to communicate? Unless you have that entire span from crazy string theorists to people practically delivering devices and processes to improve the bountiful quality of human life. That whole process must actually continue, otherwise you don't get the outputs. The part that's called fundamental physics, which is removed from producing products, that's supported by our government. And so I always like to say we, just, we owe the people who pay us an explanation for how we're spending their money. What are some of the things in physics right now that excite you the most? One of the things that I find extraordinarily ex exciting right now is that recently, humanity has taken its first actual picture of black holes. This was done with the Event Horizon Telescope. Well, it doesn't stop with taking that picture. Just like with cameras here on Earth, you want better cameras. People are already starting to work about it. In fact, there's a conference about it going on right now as we record this session. At any given time, the things that are going on, it's like walking into a candy store and saying, I want all of those toys. <laughs> Now, all of us live under one atmosphere of pressure. All of the material properties that we're used to are a reflection of how electrons, atoms and molecules behave at one atmosphere. But what happens to those materials at a thousand atmospheres of pressure, at a million, at 300 billion? Those are the questions that uh, members of the new NSF Physics Frontier Center hosted at the University of Rochester in New York are trying to answer. The 
CMAP is really multidisciplinary. So we have chemists and astrophysicists and condensed matter physicists, plasma physicists, planetary scientists, all grouped together to explore the universe with laboratory experiments and theory. I've been waiting for this uh, type of a collaboration for a long time. We are at a stage of technological development where we can probe the conditions of nature directly in the lab. And that is a new capability. It's the journey of exploration. When you embark on an experimental regime that hasn't been touched before. And so part of the excitement is just exploring new physics. So much great research and exciting events happening at this year's uh, 2021 virtual March meeting. Who better to have as our guide to help us navigate than Eva Andre, who is the 2021 March meeting program chair. Eva, welcome. Uh, thank you, Stephen. It's a pleasure. So as we all know by now, the 2021 March meeting is uh, virtual and we're going to miss it, aren't we? We're going to miss being there and, and seeing our friends and catching up with events. But what do you think are some of the benefits, some of the advantages of having the meeting virtual? First of all, less expensive, OK? You don't have to get on a plane, you don't have to book a hotel, uh, you're at home. Another important thing, so, you know, normally in every time slot, we have roughly 60 parallel sessions. So, you know, no matter what you do, you're always going to miss 59 sessions that you may have been, have wanted to, to attend. So now we have it all recorded so you can just go and pick the session that you want to, that you want to actually attend. What advice would you give to delegates who are navigating the virtual meeting, perhaps for the first time? So take advantage of the networking opportunities in chat rooms. And we have what's called a chat with an expert. Since we're now limited by the number of sandwiches and by the number of tables, we can have as many experts as we want. And fortunately, we got so many volunteers this year. There's going to be a 20 chat with expert opportunities. So I really encourage students to sign up and take advantage of that. Now, I know this is going to be a tough question for you, but uh, what do you think you would pick as some of the highlights of this year's program? So the, the whole conference is going to be kicked off by this Kavli lectures. And the topic this year is a very timely topic on quantum computing. So I, I hope that everybody will attend this. Well, Eva, thank you so much for uh, joining us today and uh, good luck with the meeting. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Stephen, and I'm looking forward to sometime meeting you in person. Now, to understand how heavy elements are produced in supernova explosions, the team at Los Alamos National Science Center performed a high hazard experiment. The information gained will contribute to our understanding of how elements are created in supernovae. With this new directly measured nuclear data at LANS, we will um, nail down the theoretical models in astrophysical scenarios that would help answer the puzzles of how the heavy elements are produced in the universe. Now, the Zoris Research Group at the University of Arizona has developed a new detector system that explores the universe at millimeter wavelengths. The main mission of our group, which is the Arizona Radio Observatory, is to build top-notch instruments for millimeter wave telescopes. And so we can bring the science and the instrumentation together in one location. This telescope was moved from New Mexico several years ago. The instrument is called the Major Research Instrumentation 
four band receiver or just the four band receiver. It covers four different wavelengths in one receiver package, which makes it unique. It's important because at millimeter wavelengths, which is where this detector functions, we study molecular emission from space. So far, and it's only been a year or two, we've discovered organic molecules at the extreme edges of our galaxy. This instrument will have a big future in the area of the, studying the molecular universe, astrobiology, astrochemistry, and of course, black hole physics. There's so much to engage with at the APS March meeting, and APS TV is bringing you all the very latest physics news and highlights from the meeting, from labs, universities, and corporations across the globe. And here's how to watch on the front page of the virtual meeting platform, on a dedicated page at the APS website, and on our YouTube channel and Twitter. Students are, of course, critical to the APS and its future. Crystal Bailey and uh, Midhat Farouk are here to discuss how APS is supporting students in these unprecedented times and the careers and student activities at the 2021 APS March meeting. It's been interesting to pivot uh, to a virtual environment from what we would normally be doing as part of the Future of Physics Days events, but we've got some great events lined up. We're doing a March Job Expo uh, where we have employers coming. It's virtual. We also have some great uh, workshops with Peter Fisk, uh, who's a great career coach, and he always does an excellent presentation. There's also an indus industry days where there's some career panel discussions and things like that. Every year at the March meeting, we have undergraduate only research sessions to provide a supportive um, environment for them. And we're doing that again virtually this year. And we have trained mentors coming in who will be providing feedback for the undergraduate students on their research talks um, just to give them that support. Also for all students, usually we have a student reception. This year it's called Physics Crossing and um, we will have virtual tours of companies and national labs that students can go check out. Also in Gather Town, we're using this platform a lot this year, we have a graduate school fair. We have done so much, I think, in this past year. Again, it's been an interesting pivot. The first thing we did last summer was launch a summer webinar series, all focused on how to keep grad students, undergraduates, and early career scientists moving forward. We also launched a success in an industry careers webinar series that started in October that is a deep dive into the skills and knowledge that you need to really be successful in private sector environments. We've also got our new career guide that we did in, in connection with IOP. The digital edition is free to anybody who wants to read it. I think it's part of APS's core values to um, encourage participation from everyone, encourage retention um, of all groups. And so one of the opportunities we've had to do that was through these virtual webinars. We had a lot of international student participation. We're actually hoping to launch a series, uh, a webinar series for international students specifically and for um, international students within the US and um, just students in other parts of the world um, this summer. Now, a look at the international collaboration between scientists at the University of Southampton in the UK and Nanyang Technological University in Singapore on artificial intelligence for photonics. Artificial intelligence has become the most important new methodology in scientific research since the adoption of quantum mechanics. Photonics is an ideal platform for artificial intelligence as Maxwell's equations can generate reliable sources of training data for deep learning algorithms. While photonic systems offer a unique platform for implementation of artificial intelligence due to the parallelism and quantum nature of photonic technologies. We are passionate about wide adoption of artificial intelligence in the science of light, as it can be adopted to developing advanced functional photonic materials, metamaterials, optical circuits, and nanophotonic devices, solving fundamental problems of light-matter interactions, and optimizing optical telecommunication 
and light assisted manufacturing technologies. Staying with photonics, Osaka University Japan is an expert in the development of semiconductor intracenter photonics. As this is a virtual meeting, there are lots of exciting and engaging events on offer from wiki editathons to Pi Day. Claudia Facciola has more. Hi, so the theme for this year is around equity, diversity, and inclusion. We would have a kickoff event uh, organized by public engagement at ABS on Sunday, which is March 14, Pi Day. Uh, it will be the Women Will Make the World Go Around. It's a wiki editathon event where participants are invited to edit wiki pages or create new biographies from women and other underrepresented groups within physics to highlight their achievements. There will be a keynote speaker, uh, Jess Wade, who heard about the event and decided to participate. The event is actually being organized by a group of our Wiki Scientist alumni. So they did the course last year and they have been um, really excited about building a community that works together on improving the visibility of underrepresented groups in physics within Wikipedia. Then we will have follow-up events like Tuesday, for example, evening, we'll have several events at creating welcoming environments and inclusive environment for all physicists. So we'll have first event will be at 4 p.m. Eastern time, LGBT plus uh, round table. Then at 5 p.m. we will have the National Society of Black Physicists meetup. And then at 6 p.m. will be the National Society of Hispanic Physicists. And of course, allies are welcome to attend. The idea is improving the professional educational climate for those who identify uh, within certain different minorities. So hope to see you all there. Now, startup company Quantum Machines offers quantum orchestration, the most advanced hardware and software platform for quantum control to enable intuitive universal control over any type of qubit system and accelerate the research and scale up of quantum computers. At Quantum Machines, we are a team of physicists and engineers on a mission to revolutionize quantum control and allow quantum computing labs and companies to work with no barriers towards the future of quantum computing. The way we code it, the way we, we talk to the machine, is very close to the way we think about it. From the idea of an experiment to running the experiment, it goes much faster. My group does research on quantum computing using trapped ion qubits. The way we use quantum machine is replace this array of DDSs by a single OPX, which is a very agile, scalable system that allows us to shoot out all the microwave and, and RF pulses that we need. So I think the partnership with quantum machine is what I'm most excited about. What I like about the OPX is that it offers a unified solution in a way that, that is much more elegant and much simpler than they used to do. QM's technology is boosting each and every lab that we enter. We're seeing these labs progressing far, far faster and running previously impossible experiments. We do anticipate that Quantum Machines is going to be present in each and every quantum research lab and quantum computing cloud infrastructure in just a couple of years' time. Machine learning is the theme of this year's Kavli Symposium, featuring outstanding physicists and their breakthroughs. 
Participant Patrick Riley from Google gives us his insights. Hi, so I'm Patrick Riley. I'm one of the leads of a group in Google research called Google Applied Science. And what we do is we try to bring all the great computational methods, especially AI and ML methods, to all kinds of natural science problems. And this is really such an exciting area for this general field because there's so many things going on. There's so much excitement about it. And it's really because a lot of the methods have really come a long way and there's a lot of opportunities now so in the talk, I'm gonna give a few uh, examples of how AI is being used in natural science problems. And we're really hitting a new point here where at first people were just like, well, I have some data, let me build a model and see what happens. But now we're really using these AI methods as a real part of the discovery. And so in two of the examples I'm gonna talk about, we're gonna show how we use AI models fundamentally as part of the search for new molecules and find a bunch of interesting things. And then in the last example, I'll, I'll get much uh, deeper into one of these questions that keeps coming up about how do we incorporate our physical knowledge into AI methods. And there's been a lot of talk about, well, we know a lot about symmetries, let's enforce those in our AI methods, but there's a much richer space there and there's a much richer set of things you can do in the space of how I bring in physical knowledge as part of an AI system. And this example I'll give that we call the cone sham regularizer really gets into that, that point. I think it'll be really illustrative for people interested in that topic. Founded by physicists, QDevil aims to accelerate R&D in quantum electronics labs by supplying world-class auxiliary systems and devices operating from millikelvin to room temperature. QDevil is a quantum technology company located in Copenhagen, Denmark. Our purpose is to accelerate quantum science worldwide. We can help them in doing their work faster because we have spent a lot of time perfecting and developing the tools that they can use for their research. QDevil is special in the way that it is bootstrapped by two physicists. If our products are not good enough for state-of-the-art labs at the Niels Bohr Institute, we don't consider them ready for the customers. There are so many details needed to get experimental physics to work. And that's why we think the devil is in the detail. They all have a scientific background. They all work in the lab and they know what quality is needed to get really good results. The future of quantum science is to a very large part unknown. QDevil's spirit is to engage with the unknown. Finally, multiverse computing are world experts and pioneers in applying quantum and quantum-inspired computing for finance. Multiverse computing is applying quantum and quantum-inspired solutions to some of the most important problems in finance. We are achieving higher return from the investment in finance, a lower risk, and improving the economic situation. Multiverse computing started as a working group of, of interested people in applying quantum computing for finance. So in this group there were physicists, there were also business people, there were also people coming from quantitative finance. We started exploring the possibility of applying quantum technologies into quantitative finance, into financial problems. We know very well the technology, we also know very well what are the problems that the people in quantitative finance and financial institutions are facing. Our edge in financial problems is that we are experts in every possible uh, quantum hardware that there is. The value that we bring is uh, to match your problem with the best possible answer the technology can give you. That's it for now from the first leg of our tour around the world of physics from the 2021 APS March meeting. But there are more episodes to come. Join us tomorrow to hear from the new APS CEO, Jonathan Bagger, and we cover everything from nuclear reactions to imaging to laser technology. See you then. Music